You can't hear it still. Start. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting. Give me half a second. Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's lovely to have all of you here. So as you all know, we've here, gathered here to uh, celebrate Narsimha Chaturdashi, which is uh, the appearance day of Lord Narsimha. Uh, usually when we think of Lord Narsimha, uh, we tend to get a little terrified. But what we don't realize uh, is that we have nothing to get, you know, scared of, or uh, he might he might seem aggressive, but that's just because that is the nature of the avatar, you know, uh, Lord Krishna has taken. So unless you have done something wrong, you have nothing to be terrified of. And uh, you know, there was uh, when 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 Lord Narasimha Dev was very angry, he was a very angry. Uh, only only Prahlad, not even the gods, nobody could calm him. Only a sincere devotee, only Prahlad could calm him. So, um, Lord Narsimha is uh, somebody who will save you from all wrong things, from all obstacles you face, from challenges, problems. It can be physical, mental, or uh, emotional, any problems. And any problem you find yourself in, you just chant his name. You just invoke him. You call him with real sincerity. You call him with that bhav, with that faith, with that devotion, and he will infinitely and always and unconditionally you know support you and be there for you so usually we start with a prayer but here today's uh, narsimha chatur dashi we'll start with a narsimha now usually i think the prayers but this time i want one of you to decide the narsimha quickly raise your hand if you want to sing i can unmute two or three people who can sing together okay Neil Madhav, can we unmute Neil Madhav who will sing the Narsimha Aarti? Yes. Thank you, Neil Madhav. Go ahead. Namaste Narasinghaya Namaste Narasinghaya Prahala Dahla Tadahine Prahala Dahla Tadahine Hiranya Kashi Poor Vaksha Hiranya Kashi Poor Vaksha Strila Tanka Nakala Re Strila Tanka Nakala Re Ito Narsingha Parato Narsingha Ito 
नरसिंह पर तो नरसिंह यत यत यामी तो नरसिंह यत यत यामी तो नरसिंह बहेर नरसिंह रे धये नरसिंह बहेर नरसिंह रे धये नरसिंह नरसिंह माधीम शरण प्रपदे नरसिंह माधीम शरण प्रपदे तव कर कमल वरे नाखा अद्भुत श्रृंगा दलिता हिरण्य कशिपो तानु ब्रेंगा केशव ग्रीता नर हरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे हे जय जगदीश हरे जय श्री लक्ष्मी नारिंह जय भक्त प्रहलाद जय श्री लक्ष्मी नारिंह जय भक्त प्रहलाद जय जय प्रभुपाद 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 जय जय प्रभुपाद जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव नित्य गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल थैंक यू थैंक यू नील माधव यू हैव अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल वॉइस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट आरती एंड विद दिस ऑस्पिशियस बिगिनिंग लेट्स बिगिन so as usual we have a very fantastic and interesting lineup for all of you i'm going to need all of you to sit tight sit with me and enjoy and you know spend this hour today invoking and remembering lord narsimha dev and uh, just calling him in whenever you are in trouble or otherwise also you keep you can also uh, you know actually chant the narsimha kavacham three times a day for protection you should do that So without further ado, let's start. I'm going to be asking you a lot of trivia in the middle. So make sure you have your chat boxes handy. And uh, now let us see how Narsimha, uh, how the appearance, the story of the appearance of Narsimha. Okay. Half lion incarnation. Narasimha avatar is the fourth amongst the dasha avatars of Lord Vishnu. Long ago there lived a great demon named Hiranyakashipu who terrorized the three worlds. He performed great austerities to receive a benediction. from lord brahma when lord brahma appeared hiranyakashipu asked for a benediction that may he not be killed by any man or beast not at night or day not on the ground or in the air not inside or outside his palace and not by any weapon lord brahma was very satisfied by hiranyakashipu's austerities which were difficult to perform therefore when solicited for benedictions lord brahma indeed granted them although they were rarely achieved while hiranyakashipu was performing austerities taking advantage of his absence the demigods attacked his kingdom they caught hold of hiranyakashipu's pregnant wife kayadu and held her captive so that they could kill the newborn and stop the blooming of another hiranyakashipu like oppressive demon however narad muni came to the rescue of the child and urged the demigods to free kayadu as her forthcoming issue was destined to be a great devotee of the supreme lord hearing this the demigods immediately released her with due honor and returned to their respective kingdoms 
Narad Muni then instructed Gayadu and Prahalad, who was in the womb, about pure devotional service. After having received the benediction, powerful Hiranyakashipu returned to his palace. He was very pleased to see his son Prahlad. Hiranyakashipu decided to send Prahlad to the best Gurukul. So he sent him to the Gurukul of Shanda and Amarka, who were the sons of Shukracharya. The teachers Shanda and Amarka instructed Prahlad about the three kinds of material advancement called religion, economic development, and sense gratification. Prahlad, however, being devoted to Lord Vishnu, did not like the materialistic instructions of his teachers. When Prahlad returned from his school, Hiranyakashipu questioned, Son, what did you learn in school today? Prahlad answered, Oh, Father, I learned that Lord Vishnu is the source of everything and unalloyed devotional service unto his lotus feet is the perfection of life. Hiranyakashipu was furious to hear Prahlad's words as it glorified Lord Vishnu his greatest enemy. Hence, he decided to kill Prahlad. Hiranyakashipu tried many tricks to kill Prahlad, but he could not kill his son Prahlad by throwing him beneath the feet of big elephants, throwing him among fearful snakes, hurling him from the top of a hill. When Hiranyakashipu realized that he could not in any way harm Prahlad, who was completely sinless. He was in great anxiety about what to do next. Hiranyakashipu, in great anger, then asked Prahlad, If your Lord Vishnu is present everywhere, then is he present in this pillar? Prahlad replied, Yes, Father, my worshipable Lord is present in this pillar too. Hiranyakashipu got up from his royal throne, took up his powerful club and with great anger struck it against the pillar and said, Let me see if your Lord is really present in this pillar. That moment from within the pillar came a fearful sound, a great rumbling roar, which seemed to crack the covering of the universe. The pillar cracked and burst asunder. From within the pillar appeared Lord Narasimha Dev in his half man, half lion form, which was most wonderful to behold. Lord Narasimha Dev's form was as dazzling as millions of rising suns and his fiery eyes were filled with anger. With a sword in his hand, Hiranyakashipu arrogantly rushed towards the Lord, falsely thinking that he could kill the Lord. Lord Narasimha Dev fought with the demon for a while. And finally, at the right time, when the sun was setting in the horizon, the Lord put the demon on his lap at the doorway of the palace and ripped him apart with his nails. In this way, Lord Brahma's boon was kept intact, for the demon was killed not by any weapon, but nails, not by any man or beast, but by half man half lion, not in the day or at night, but at dusk, not on the ground or in the air, but on the lap, neither inside nor outside the palace, but 
on the doorway. In this way, Lord Narasimha Dev appeared to protect his dear most devotee, Prahalad. Lord Narasimha Dev removes all obstacles from the path of devotional service. Narasimha Dev Bhagavan Ki Jai. That was so beautiful, wasn't it? And we got to learn so much. Um, let's move forward. I want to tell you about somebody, somebody very special. Uh, somebody who recently left uh, this existence to uh, go into the spiritual abode. I'm talking about uh, the head pujari of the Mayapur temple, Pankaj Angri Prabhu, who was a very, very elevated soul. Yet he was one of the most humble, the most uh, down to earth people you would ever meet. Uh, he he uh, had a very divine and intimate connection with Narsimha, with uh, the uh, Narsimha deity of, of, of Mayapur. And uh, he also enjoyed a lot of pastimes together. So um, in from, from him, we learn the amount of, you, you have to be very sincere, very faithful, and you have to be devoted to uh, the Lord. And, uh, and, and still, in spite of being at such a high uh, level, you have to remember your ground. You have to stay rooted, firmly rooted. Uh, so um, I'm going to be asking you some great trivia now. Okay. Uh, keep your chat boxes ready, please. Okay. Which uh, popular demigod gets his power from Narsim Made? Okay, please just write in the chat box. Don't raise your hand. And you have to write it personally to me so that others don't see your answer. Which popular demigod gets demigod gets his power from Narsim Made? No, it's not Narad Muni. Yes, it is Ganesh. That's correct. So Ganesh Ji, Ganpati Bappa is um, is an obstacle. It's known as Vigna Harta. Uh, he removes all the obstacles from your path. When you are starting something new, you think you invoke Lord Ganesha and uh, then you start so that there are no obstacles in your journey and your whole journey is smooth and the flow is smooth. So yes, it's Ganesh Ji. That's correct. That's perfect. So now we saw the appearance of Narsimha Dev. Uh, actually, his real appearance is on 25th May. That's in Narsimha Chaturvedashi. And uh, that's when, you know, he had appeared, descended from, uh, the, from, from his eternal place. So um, now we'll be doing an Abhishek together. And after that, uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions related to the Abhishek and also related to Narsimha Dev. So make sure you pay attention. Make sure uh, you sit back and uh, you invoke him in your mind and uh, let's just go ahead to the beautiful Abhishek that uh, we're going to be seeing now. Shri Narasimha Jai Narasimha Jai Jai Narasimha Kaladesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringa
so that is the five thing it's actually nectar nectar all these uh, uh, are very pure substances and actually used as nectar so it's called panch amrut okay so um on on 25th when uh, the appearance day of narsimha dev narsimha chaturdashi is there you can all participate by doing your own abhishek at your house if you have a dt or uh, and you can also offer them bhog and actually it's like birthday so just how you would celebrate your birthday you would celebrate their birth okay uh one last question before uh, the next uh, uh the next item on our list uh what was the name of hiranyakashipu's brother and who were they in their previous previous life quickly hiranyaksh yes fantastic and who are they in their hiranyaksh and hiranyakashipu so who are they in their previous life what was uh, what what were the names what were their names jay and vijay fantastic so i'm sure all of you know the story of jay and vijay how uh, you know they were cursed and they became uh, hiranyaksh and hiranyaksh uh, hiranyakashipu so okay without further ado we move to a very very interesting segment of today's program we are going to hear about some very unheard pastimes of narsimha dev i'm sure all of you have already you all know the most popular ones and the more uh, you know explored ones but i'm sure you don't know what uh, you know uh, uh, so we are going to hear right now so we're going to be joined by celine and uh, she's a she's just a beautiful soul she is a yoga teacher uh, practicing in the uh, in the netherlands and uh, she is somebody who always looks for depth and meaning and uh, into the just just exploring into the very core of our existence so we'll be joined by her who will be telling and sharing unheard pastimes of narsimha dev so i want all of you to uh, welcome her with uh, three hari bol so hari bol hari bol hari bol Hello Hari bol everyone. <laughs> so great to be here with you. Thank you Mataji for announcing so beautifully. So great to see you all. Wow, we're with so many. We're 110 people and even more. I see sometimes people with two. So if you want you can turn your camera on so we can all see each other. Um so today they asked me to uh share with you some stories about Narshima Dev. So I was thinking, you know, and thinking, oh, what shall I, what shall I share? What will be good for them, you know? Because actually, one year ago, uh, I was exactly where you are now in India, but unfortunately, due to Corona, I had to come home back to Holland. Do you all know uh, Holland? You know the Netherlands and Europe. Who who has been in 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 the Netherlands? Ah, some people. Nice. Okay. So um once I was in India I studied the scriptures and some of the wisdom that the sages gave us so hopefully I will share this with you today So in the video we saw already the story about Prahlad and Hiranyakashipu and Narsimha Dev right and there are actually three pillars on this story three words you can say the first one is fear and courage because uh, Prahlad had to go through so many fearful situations right he was thrown in front of snakes he was thrown in front of the uh, or off the cliffs he was uh, put in boiling hot water so there were so many fearful situations that he came into but he had very much the courage right to stand through next to courage he also had faith he had so much faith in lord uh, in lord krishna or lord narsimha dev uh, that he would be saved so we will speak about that and lastly protection because lord narsimha dev of course comes to protect us So we will look into some nice Vedic stories um, to illustrate these points. Yeah, thumbs up. You're there. Okay, perfect. So let us start with the first one. The first one is courage and fear. Prahlad came in so many fearful situations, but where does actually courage come from? Have you all been in some fearful situations where you felt really scared? Sometimes, yeah, when it's dark, maybe on the streets or. Yes, ah, uh, see many chats. Yes, okay. So, where do you get courage from? What kind of things give you courage? Can you name a few things? The Lord, yes, light, the mother, great, Krishna, of course. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, let us look into a nice story. What what illustrates this? So, once upon a time, there was in a jungle 
a mouse, very small mouse. And he was living there peacefully, you know. He had his food, little cheese here and there. He had a nice hole where he would live. And he was running about in the forest very nicely. But one day there came a cat, ferocious cat, and he was chasing the mouse because he thought, mm, you know, little mouse, I want to eat him. So he was following him around the whole jungle. And this mouse, he was running and sweating for his life. And he thought, oh, if only five more minutes I have to run, then I will for sure be dead. You know, the, the cat will catch me. So what happens? He's running and running and suddenly, boof, he bumps upon something big. He looks up and it's a big yogi. It's a yogi who is sitting, you know, meditating for years and years together. So this yogi, he opens his eyes, of course, because this mouse, he runs into him and he's saying, what is this? I'm meditating peacefully and you, you bump into me, you disturb my meditation, what's going on? So this mouse said, oh, please, you know, yogi, you have so many yogic powers, please help me because this cat is gonna chase me, chase me and I'm gonna be killed. So the yogi says, don't worry, don't worry. You know, uh, I have my yogic powers, I use it. I will turn you into a cat. I will turn you into a cat so this other cat won't chase you anymore. And his mouse says, yeah, yeah, please, please do it, please do it. So, poof, you know, the mouse becomes a cat and the cat is so happy. Oh, yes, you know, he saved me. And he goes back peacefully in the forest. And he's staying there for a few days. But after around three days, this cat is chased, but this time by tiger. So the cat is running, you know, tiger is so much bigger than this cat. So he's running and he thinks, oh, no. The only thing that can help me now is the yogi. So he's running, running, you know, the, the ferocious uh, tiger. He has like teeth, uh, like super big, and he's very hungry. He wants to eat this cat. So they're running in a cat, like a cat and mouse game. So this cat slowly comes and then he bumps upon the yogi again. But this yogi is, you know, sitting silent, meditation. And then this cat is there. Oh, please, please, you know, yogi, help me. You have to wake up because... The tiger is behind me. So the yogi, he opens his eyes very peacefully and he says, what now? I saved you. You were fearful. I made you, you were a mouse. I made you into a cat. Now what obstacle is there? So then uh, the cat says, now a tiger is chasing me. Help fast, you know. So the yogi says, okay, no problem. Be quiet. I make you into a tiger now. You become a tiger and then there's no problem anymore. No tigers chasing you. Watch out. You know, and then he becomes a tiger. So he's peacefully saying, oh, thank you. I will for sure not come back anymore because, you know, now everything is go good. So he goes back uh, peacefully to the forest. But after two or three weeks, he comes back running, running this tiger, you know, sweating, face is bright red. And again, he bumps upon the yogi. And the yogi is like, come on, the third time, you crazy. Now what happened? You are the king of the jungle. Why are you coming back again? And the tiger says, yeah, I saw some nice chickens in the village of the humans and I wanted to eat them. And now the whole village is chasing me. You know, please help me, what do I do? And this yogi is like, my God, this, this guy, he never learns. What do I do with him? And then, he thinks of something, he has an idea, he thinks, aha, so, and this tiger, he looks at his body, he sees it transforming, he's like, what, I'm a mouse again? You made me into a mouse again? And the yogi says, yeah, because when you're a mouse, the humans cannot chase you. And this mouse is like, oh no, I started as a mouse, I became a cat, I became a tiger, and now again, I'm a mouse. So what have I have achieved, right? So what do we actually learn from this story? From this story, we learn that real courage, real strength, it doesn't come from uh, changes external of us, right? They come in every form of life. And we see this similarly with Pralat Prabhu. Pralat, he was always, you know, when he was thrown in front of the snakes, when he was thrown off the cliff, he never asked, oh, please, uh, Please, God can, or the Lord, can I please uh, become as powerful as Hiranyakarshipu so I can fight him? No, he never asked that. He asked, oh, please, Lord, protect me. And what, whatever you want to happen, you make it happen. So actually, real courage, it comes from within us and not from any things outside of us, right? So that's the first one, courage and fear. 
Then we go to the second story. Do you remember what it was? Or the second uh, pillar? We had three, we had courage. You can say in the chat. What was the second one? Mm -hmm. Trick question for you. <laughs> faith, exactly. Yes, good. So the second one was faith. Because we saw very much that uh, Prelat had so much faith in the North. So in order to illustrate this again, there's a very nice story coming from the Qurans. So a long time ago, you know, lived high up in the mountains, a devotee of Lord Nashimadev. And he lived, you know, very remote. There was nothing around. He had just a little piece of a field, you know, with uh, some rice that he could make. He had one bull, he had a son, a son that would help him on the land. And um, he would have small little hut. So he was living there very peacefully, nothing going on. And in his house, in this small little hut, he had a nice uh, deity of Lord Nashima Dev that he would every day, you know, he would do the puja, he would do the arti, he would uh, worship him and offer prayers. So what happened one day? There was a big, big storm. You had the big storm, right? Some people of you are in Mumbai now. Who is in Mumbai? Ah, some people, you had the big uh, uh, rainy uh, hurricane or something, right? Cyclone. Cyclone. Ula. <laughs> yes, many people. Okay. Yeah. So one day there was something like this happening also in, um, in this, in this uh, village where this farmer would live, this devotee of Narashimadev. So what happened? Actually, the bull, he broke out. He ran away into the forest. So this farmer, this devotee, he lost his bull. So that same day, the, uh, the neighbor of this farmer, he came and he said, oh no, you have lost your bull. Now what are you gonna do? You know, you, you cannot work on the land anymore. You, you lost your most precious possession. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. But the farmer said, huh? You don't know what is good, what is bad. You know, let the Lord take care of it. Lord Nashima Dev, he, he for sure he has a plan. You know, this neighbor said, okay, you do your thing. No problem. So what happened next day? Actually, this bull, he remembered, aha, you know, I know that I can get some food there. Some really nice things to eat is there at the farmer's house, not in the jungle. So he comes running back to the house of the farmer. And behind him, are three other bulls who followed him from the forest, wild bulls. So fast the son and the farmer, they capture them. And now they don't have one, but four bulls. So of course this neighbor from the, from the farmer is coming again and he's saying, whoa, you know, now you have four bulls. Whoa, you should go to the city, you sell them, you're gonna be so happy, you're gonna be rich. You can build yourself a big house, you know, with swimming pool and everything. But the farmer says, huh, you know, what is good? What is bad? We don't know. Lord Nashimadev, he has a plan. Let's trust that. We don't know. And his farmer said, well, okay, I would be happy, but it's your call, you could say. So he goes back to his house. What is happening next day? <laughs> you feel it already, right? <laughs> Something's coming up. So next day, this son is trying to tame these wild bulls because these bulls, they are running here and there, right? And they don't listen at all. So the son is trying, you know, to tame them and to, to make them work on the field. But what is happening? These bulls are so wild, you know, and angry, ferocious that they're being captured, that they stamp upon the legs of the son. So the son, he breaks both of his legs, completely crumbled. So he's laying in bed, you know, having pain. He cannot walk anymore. And of course, the neighbor comes and the neighbor says, oh, your son, you know, you lost your son and now he cannot work on the land. What are you gonna do? You know, you have no one to take care of you. You're an old man, what are you gonna do? And what does the farmer say? <laughs> The farmer says, of course, what is good, what is bad? We don't know it. It's up to the Lord. We just continue praying. He must have a plan for us. So then the next and the final day, what is happening? The army is coming to uh, recruit uh, boys, young boys, you know, who can fight in the army. 
So first they go to the neighbor and they take his son because he's fit and he's healthy. And then they come to the farmer's house and they ask him, we need your son. You know, he needs to come and fight with us in the war. But this, uh, this farmer says, yeah, but he broke both of his legs. How can he fight? He cannot even walk with you. And then the army uh, leader said, okay, so we don't need him. We leave him behind. So actually in this sense, the son was saved, right? And again, the farmer says, yeah, what's good, what's bad? We don't know. So what do we learn from this story? We actually learn that we cannot predict the future, right? We are not yogis that can see everything in past and, and future. Not yet, not yet. Soon we will be. <laughs> but um, so we learn to trust, to have the faith that everything will be okay, even though it's a fearful situation, even though it's a painful or something we think is bad for us. We see that as long as we have faith, as long as we trust, then will be taken care of us by the Lord. Similarly, Prahlad, in all these situations, you know, in the boiling hot water, in, in front of the elephants that tried to trample him, um, he was being faithful. He was always praying because he had trust in the divine plan. So similarly, we can learn that, that in our bad situations, we think of the farmer and we think how he, you know, did these things. So that was... Uh, the second one. Do you know the third one? The third pillar. So we had uh, courage and fear. We had faith. What was the third one? Yeah. <laughs> yes, protection. Indeed, protection. Good. So the third one was protection. And actually to look at how Narshima Dev protects us, we can look at the deity of Mayapur. Who has ever been to Mayapur? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, some people. Janki, I see, yes. Avi, Aditi. Nice, many people. Did you like it? Like it or not? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Hari Priya, nice, okay. Good, yeah, Mayapur is so beautiful, right? So actually, uh, there is the deity of Narshima Dev. Have you seen it? You seen the DT? Nice. Yes, I got a big, big yes of <laughs> Pranshu Gupta. Yes, it's beautiful, right? And it's a very special DT. Um, it came there after many, many obstacles on the path, actually. And we saw it just now on the on the little video, right? During the Abhishek. So uh, this DT came there after a long time. It was so difficult to get that DT there. And after all these obstacles and hardships, um, the, all the Pujaris were put together and they asked them, okay, now uh, who wants to be the Pujari for, uh, for Lord Nashima Dev? And no one said anything, completely quiet. And this leader is like, temple president is like, hello, <laughs> who wants to be the, the, you know, the Pujari for Nashima Dev, our new deity? Who's so special? Again, silence. No one said a word. And you're like, well, what is this? Why, why is no one saying? And he said, you, you, tell me, why don't you want to be the Puchari? He said, oh, please, uh, Prabhuji, he's so ferocious, you know, I'm even scared to do something wrong in front of the deity. I'm really not, uh, not me. And you, well, and about, how about you? The director said. And other Pujari said, no, 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 not me. Oh my God. Have you seen those teeth? I'm not going to do it. You crazy. No. <laughs> then he said, oh, what about you? You, you tell me, but why do you, do you not want to do it? He's said, have you seen his nails? You know, they're so long. I ugh, imagine the deity jumping out of the, of the, <laughs> of the temple and uh, I will be there. No way. And then someone else comes in. Do you, do you want to be the Pujari? No. My God, he has intestines around his neck. I couldn't be close to these intestines, you know, never. And then the last one he asked, oh, how about you? Why don't you want to do it? He said, have you seen his eyes? I cannot even look directly into his eyes. They are so fiery, you know, he will kill me instantly. So in this sense, no one dared to do it. And of course, this is like big ferocious form, you know, with so many arms, with the sharp nails. 
that no one dared. Have you ever been angry? Yes, yeah, <laughs> everyone, yeah, we've been angry. <laughs> About what have you been angry? What kind of things make you angry? Uh-oh. <laughs> your brother, your brother makes you angry? Oh, yoy. <laughs> now the secret's coming about. <laughs> the brothers and family, oh, yes. Many things can happen that make us angry, right? So um, we are often angry. But have you also been sometimes so angry that you can just explode out of anger? Yeah? Oh, when there's no chocolate or no ice cream, yes. <laughs> yes, so imagine the, the time that you were the most angry your whole life, right? And then multiply that by a million and then by even more a million and again a million and then multiply that the time that you were most angry with the amount of stars there are in the night sky, right? So, so angry and even angrier was Lord Nashima Dev when he wanted to, when Hiranyi Kashipu wanted to kill um, Prelat. So no one in the whole, in whole Mayapur dared to do it. But in the end, our dear uh, Pankaja, uh, Pankajangri Prabhu, right, with his twin, he did it. And he wrote down some beautiful pastimes that happened in front of this deity. Because what we see is that you know, when there is a lion, a normal lion in the forest, and he is very uh, angry, he's angry towards the enemy, but he's not angry towards his own babies, right? So actually, each one of us are the babies of Narashima Dev. <laughs> so we never have to be afraid of him, but his enemies have to be afraid. So we see this into some beautiful pastimes. For instance, um, maybe you know that, you know, there's the Yes, he passed away some, some days ago. So uh, he left his body, but still we have these beautiful pastimes that, um, that we can, uh, can we share. So he wrote these down. Actually, uh, Panga Jangri Prabhu, he wrote down about this one time that there were very heavy rains, right? You've been in the mood zone, right? And it just, you think it will never stop, <laughs> right? Am I right? The muson rains and it just, oh, you cannot go outside. So the same happened in Mayapur. And it was so, you know, there was so, so much rain that the whole temple came and stand underwater. Who has been there when the temple was completely underwater? Some of you been there? Hmm, okay. So yeah, the whole temple or approximately till here, Till their waist, everyone was in the water. Hundreds of people, they were completely wet, but still they wanted to be in Mangala Arti. <laughs> so they all came and stand there in the water. And also uh, Pankajangri Prabhu, he was standing there and he was doing the Arti in front, in front of the Lord Nashima Dev uh, deity. So he did that. And, uh, you know, he was doing, he was offering the different items. And suddenly, he saw a very big, long snake entering the temple. You know, like this big. He'd almost never seen something like that. Super long. And it came, you know, floating through the devotees. And there was panic, you know, panic. Everyone was like, oh, oh, oh. And then he came closer, closer to the altar, closer to Lord Rashima Dev. And Panka uh, Jangri Prabhu was like, oh my God, okay, let me just pray to Lord Rashima Dev and everything will be okay, or will be good, you know? And I just do what I can. So just continue my service and not pay attention to the snake. So what happened, the snake went underwater and the Ganges water is a little bit muddy. Who has been, who has been swimming in the Ganges before? Ganges? Some people? Yeah, good. So you know, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit darker water, a little bit uh, muddy. So uh, the snake disappeared under the water. And Panka Jangri Prabhu was like, oh my God, you know, what is he going to do? He's going to attack me underwater or what is going to happen? So we thought, okay, just like, continue my service. It happened a little while later, just five minutes later, the snake comes again to the surface. He goes one time around the deity and then he disappears. And he didn't hurt anyone in the temple. And actually every day after that, 
uh, every day that the temple was underwater, the snake came into the temple, went around Lord Nashimadev, and went out again without hurting anyone. So this is quite special, like, right? Actually, we can wonder who, who was this snake in next life? What happened with that snake? So this is a very special uh, pastime of um, Pankarajangri Prabhu. And the next one is also really nice. Um, because one day, uh, there was a, one of the devotees called Bhava Siddhi, and he was very afraid. He was one of the pujaris of Lord Nishima Dev, but he was always very afraid to do something wrong. You know, so he would have, for instance, uh, uh, the incense stick, let's say the pen is the incense, and he was doing a little bit like this, you know, he was like afraid that uh, something might happen or, you know, so yeah, that he would do something wrong. So he's like a little bit shaky doing the things, but, you know, every day. So one day he finished. And he is doing, uh, you know, dandavat in front of the deity. And behind him, he hears a roar, roar you know, wow, the loudest noise in the whole universe. He's never heard something like it. You know, and he completely startles and he looks around, but there's no one. No one's there. But the sound was so loud, his ears are like dinging still. So he looks behind and he thinks that must have been the deity, you know, sound coming from the deity. So what he does, he rushes towards his room, you know, to, to be with the other devotees because he's so scared. And he goes to bed, he goes to sleep, closes his eyes. But in the middle of the night, what happens? He wakes up because his whole bed is shaking. Like, oh, it feels a lot of, uh, you know, shake and movement in the bed. Oh, now you're in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of shaking. And he thinks, what is happening? What's happening? So he opens his eyes and he sees in front of him, bowed over him, Narashimadev. Actually, he sees all the arms, the big arms of Lord Narashimadev. He feels actually the paw with all the sharp nails. He feels it on his shoulder. And it feels like the whole weight, the weight of the whole universe is on his shoulder, right? He sees the teeth that have blood on them. He sees the intestines hanging about. And he's even more scared, you know, I think, oh my God. So he's just, he cannot even move. He cannot even scream. It's completely like stoned. And what does Lord Nashima Dev say to him? He's saying, please, you know, be calm. Don't fear me. Actually, I'm protecting you. So just be calm, do your duty. Don't fear me. And he's gone again. And his pujari is like, he's losing it completely, you know? He's like, oh my God, did I dream this? Was it real? So he's like, complete confusion. But then he looks on his shoulder and he sees that actually he has the, the you know, the blood that someone, like a claw was on his back. So he sees actually, oh my God, Lord Nashimadev was there. So he runs out of the, you know, out of his living room and he runs towards the temple where the devotees are gathering for Mangala Arti. And he's like, he falls in front of the deity of Lord Nashimadev, falls completely stiff and offering prayers, offering prayers. And, uh, and then he looks up and he sees, everyone is looking at me. Why is everyone looking at me? And then some other devotees say, Prabhuji, you are in your underwear. What are you doing? <laughs> So actually, he was completely naked. He just had his underwear on because he was so scared. He forget about, uh, forgot about everything. So these are uh, two very special pastimes that um, uh, Panka Jangri Prabhu, he wrote down for us. So um, yeah, maybe do quick prayer for him in our minds. And that, uh, yeah, because he left his body recently. So these are some of the uh, amazing features about Lord, Lord Nashima Dev and what we can learn. So we looked first about uh, courage, that courage comes from within and that courage comes from the faith and the trust that we have in Lord Nashima Dev, in Krishna, right? And then we saw lastly that Lord Nashima Dev is there to protect us, not to harm us, but of course to, to protect us always and to do some miracles for us too when we pray in front of the deity. So um, that was what I wanted to share with you. I hope you all enjoyed a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, these were the stories. And now we are going to go to the next uh, segment. 
I don't know who is going to take over now. Hi, I'm Haribol. It's me. Haribol, yes. <laughs> Thank you. It was wonderful. I got to learn so much. It was so beautiful and it was amazing. We all <laughs> Haribol to you. Thank you so much, okay. Mataji. So, <laughs> Thank you so much, for Mataji. For people who don't know her, you can uh, check out her website, uh, VedicEssenceYoga.com. It's very beautifully curated. So go check it out after this. And uh, uh -huh. thank you once again, Mataji Haripur. No worries. Thank you. And thank you everyone for uh, being so enthusiastic and uh, answering to all the questions in the chat. Really nice. It was really good to spend some time with you and enjoy the, the rest of the day and the program. <laughs> Haripur Jai Natsi Mataji. Haripur Jai. So that was beautiful. And now we move on. I'm going to ask you all some questions from the stories that the Madhuji said, and also, uh, uh, no, you know, from other, uh, you know, other pastimes of Lord Narasimha Dev. So first off, I'm going to start with something very easy. What does the name Narasimha mean? Okay, this is pretty easy. Uh, you have to answer me in the chat box. What does the name Narasimha mean? You can break it down if you want, and that's a very big hint I'm giving you. Yes, man and lion. Nara is man and lion is Simha. Fantastic. So you will know the story. And uh, Narasimha means half man and half lion. So one more question, one more question. Why was it that uh, Hiranya Kashyapu hated Vishnu so very much? Why was it that, you know, you at the slightest show of an, uh, display of devotion and affection by Prala toward Vishnu, Narasimha used to get, uh, sorry, uh, Hiranya Kashyapu used to get so agitated. Why was it that he hated so much? Because he killed his brother Hiranya. Uh, which avatar of Vishnu killed uh, Hiranya? Who can help me with that? Which avatar of Vishnu killed Hiranya? Vaman? No, it's not the Vaman avatar. Yes, it's Vara avatar. Vara Dev uh, killed uh, Hiranya. Okay. Uh, and uh, yes, one last question before we move on to something all of you have been eagerly awaiting. Uh, Today also, um, there is a place, there's a place where Lord Narsimha descended upon and, you know, the, the, the pillar which he, you know, broke and came out from is uh, still there. Which, what is the name of the place? Ahobilam. Fantastic. And what state is Ahobilam? Which state of India? Andhra Pradesh. Fantastic. You guys are so awesome devotees. I don't think, uh, you know, there is uh, anything stopping you from being ultimately, you know, like Pralat, extremely sincere, faithful and devotional and dedicated. So uh, thank you everybody for these answers. And now we're going to move on to the magic show. We have uh, Kruti Parekh Mataji who's going to be leading that. And without further ado, over to you. Haripur Mataji, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm right here. Can you spotlight me? Right here. Okay. So Haribol, everyone, how are you doing? It's going to be a very, very interactive session. And I know I've been uh, listening to a little bit of the wonderful stories and the wonderful uh, messages that have been given by a lot of people here and how wonderfully you're responding uh, to all the answers. So yes, even for our session, I would really want this to be a very, very interactive thing. Uh, so as I'm going to begin about the wonderful story of um, Prahlad, there is one learning that we really get. And I think this learning is the learning of life. And the biggest message I feel that this entire story of uh, Narasimha Dev gives us is that we need to believe that we can make everything possible. And there is nothing impossible. Because if you know that uh, Hiranya Kashyap had got the boon, that he can neither be killed in the day or the night, neither... Uh, by a man or an animal. And if you go through the entire boon, it was just impossible to kill Hiranyakashya. But Lord Vishnu came up with an answer. He came up with that one possibility out of all the impossibilities that had been created by Hiranyakashya when he took the boon from Brahma. So the same way, we in our own lives have to understand that we have the power to make the impossible possible. And I'm gonna show you 
this wide, this wonderful small storyline uh, magic that I'm going to do. I have a piece of thread here. I'm just going to take the thread out of the spool. And in life, we're all going to be faced with a lot of challenges because life also seems to be impossible. We'll be happy, we'll be sad, we'll have pain, we'll have pleasure, we'll have happy moments, we'll have sad moments, we'll have love, we will have heartbreak, we will have a lot of disappointment. We'll have a lot of problems in our life which will break us, like how this piece of thread is being broken by this fire. But it is only in our own hands to take all these pieces of thread, roll it up with the courage and belief that Vishnu is with us in whatever we undertake. And I'm just gonna put this on this thread and as I hold on to this thread right here, this is all the knots of our life that we have gathered together and put the faith in Vishnu. And like how Narsimha Avtar came to save us of the impossibilities, I want everyone, I want everyone to type in, in your chats, Jay Narsimha Dev. I want everyone to chat in Jay Narsimha Dev and look, 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 look what Vishnu does. He takes our life and he makes it one again, the way we had begun. If you're like this, I want you to type in how you like this magic and I want you to tell me and believe in yourself that yes, if you believe in yourself, Vishnu is going to bring the magic into your lives and make everything wonderful. No matter how impossible it looks, it's all going to be possible. Moving beyond, we're having a wonderful thing. As I mentioned, it's all about belief. It's all about making the impossible possible. So I'm going to actually do this wonderful thing to make the impossible possible, it's all a power of your mind. It's all a power of your brain. It's about what you think, what you really believe in, right? So I'm gonna actually do this thing with you. You see this, a solid spoon. We have a solid spoon, which is absolutely straight. There's nothing wrong with the spoon. And what we're all going to do is, if you'll have, okay, what I'm gonna ask you to do, if you have, if you have a spoon with you, right now or in your houses go quickly and get it with you we're gonna try to do this we're gonna try to do this with the chant so let's quickly quickly i'm gonna give you two minutes to quickly go and grab a spoon for yourself i'm gonna just check with a couple of videos uh, whether you've got the spoons or not if you're on video it would be wonderful because then i'll get to see all of you right get your spoons if you have a spoon with you right now okay so a lot of you may get it and a lot of you may not get it but it's all about belief it's all about praying hard. It's all about believing that the impossible is going to be possible with the blessings of Vishnu. So I want everyone to take the spoon and, and focus on it. So what we're all going to try and do is we're going to try and make the spoon bend. Okay. That's what we're all going to try and do. So we all have the spoon with us. Okay. We're all going to focus So everyone, everyone together. We're going to focus on the spoon and watch. Okay. And we're all going to say, we're all going to say, we're all going to focus and we're going to say Jai Narsimha Dev. We're going to say that and we're going to ask him to give us the power to make the impossible possible. Well, here we have the spoon bent. How many of you all got it? You can just show me your spoons. Some of you may have just a small break in the spoon or a small bend in the spoon. If you look carefully, I want all of you to put the spoons like this right there in front of your cameras. 
so that let me see if, if any one of you all have got a little little so bend on the spoons little also bend on the spoons keep your keep your uh, spoons really close to the camera so that i can see your spoons yes i see so many of you you all have a little bit of bend in your spoons i see that i see that that's wonderful but it's a good thing it's a good thing if you believe more and you pray more it's going to be able to bend like this so what does this tell us tell me everyone what does this really tell us i want you all to please type it on your camera uh, on your uh, chats what does this really tell us what does this tell us tell me what does this tell us please put it on your chat so that i can see you all right i can see you all okay 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 wonderful perfect wow faith and belief can make everything possible yes of course faith and belief can make tell us what we should believe in ourselves yes everything is possible that's absolutely right you are getting the message right there so 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 you all know the story right what did those there were so many tests that bhakt pralad passed through do you right do you know can you please tell me tell me what was the first test that uh, pralad had to pass through one of the tests okay one of the tests we'll make it simple okay yes give me snake yes snake test elephant yes yes and more more thrown down the cliff that's right that's right water okay fire yes yes i think fire was was one of the most difficult ones for him maybe right and do you know the last one where finally um narsimha dev had to come in was when he was tied to this pillar so i have a small representation of bhakt prahlad here and what i'm going to do is this kind of represents the the pillar and how hiranyakashyap really tied bhakt prahlad i am going to take this pin okay you can see this pin and i am going to pin it like this okay and close the pin like this so that there is no way that bhakt prahlad can escape from this look at this the pin is there and there's no way that bhakt prahlad can escape out of this is that right tell me can bhakt prahlad now escape out of this if i have tied this no okay that's exactly what happens i want to show this again to you that always always watch carefully we have this and we have the pillar we again take and for those who did not see it i am going to again take bhakt prahlad put it inside this pillar and put the pin and close it like this no way bhakt prahlad can come out of this is that right but do you all know what did bhakt prahlad chant do you know what did bhakt prahlad chant to come out of this can you all type in what did bhakt prahlad chant to believe in god what did he chant and what made vishnu come back yes he chanted okay we have namo narayana yes 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 so what he said and he what he meant is please save the bhakt vishnu please save the bhakt vishnu he kept on saying that he kept on saying that yes he was saying om bhagavate vasudevaya namaha he kept saying om bhagavate vasudevaya namaha and vasudev vishnu krishna had to finally come and save him so there's no way that he can come out of this but when he chants his mantra and he says please god come descend and save me and that time krishna comes and all he does is taps on his head and comes and saves pralad from the pillar of death where he was tied the same way we need to believe and we need to believe in the impossible is that right okay so now i want you to memorize i want you to memorize and we're going to test you know like how god tests us in different situations in different conditions the same way today we are going to 
test whether when we ask Vishnu for help. So I am going to show you this paper. It says, save the Bhakt Vishnu. It says, save the Bhakt Vishnu. Okay, I'm going to repeat again. It says, save the Bhakt Vishnu. Can you all read this? What does it try? What does it mean? Please, please, please put it up on your chat. So I know you all are following this and you all are enjoying this. And if you like the magic, please, please, please type it on the chat so I can see uh, whatever the magic is happening for you in your minds. So this is is a is a mantra. It's called Save the Bhakt Vishnu. Save the Bhakt Vishnu. Yes. And I want everyone to remember this because now I want some participants. So can I have the host to um, unmute? I want one, two, three, four people. Four people unmuted. Uh, so if the participants can raise their hands so that we can slowly have uh, one by one the participants come in and do the pro activity and test whether this mantra really works or it doesn't work. Okay. Hare Krishna. Remember this. Okay. Who is the first participant? Sri Ram. Hare Krishna. Sri Ram. Hare Krishna. Okay. So before, before Sri Ram uh, starts speaking, I'm going to show you all. I have one thing and one thing is very important whenever we pray to God and that is faith. F F A I E F A. I have two separate decks of cards at F A I T H F A. So in both these packs, we have faith. And what we're going to do is we're going to test this mantra. Faith and faith. And let's see whether it really works or it doesn't work. So, Shrida, where are you? Here, Mataji. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to test this mantra. So the first word is save, right? The first word is save. So as you spell the word, you will tell me whether I move the card from this pack or I move the card from this pack. And at the end, after you finish spelling it, it's your choice how you spell the mantra. And if after that, if both the cards are the same, that means the first word of the mantra works. And we're going to test the entire mantra that way. Is that right? Understood? Yes. All right, Sri Ram. How do we spell save? From here first or from here? Uh, fra from the left side. This one? Yes. Okay. So, S? Yes. A from where? Here or here? Uh, the opposite side. Here? A? Yes. Okay. Yes. V from where? Here or here? The same side. Okay. V. E from where? Here or here? The opposite side. This one? Yes. All right. We move it. And let's see what do we have. We have the letter I here. And we have the letter I here. Wow. This word really worked. Let's go to the second one. So can we have the second participant? Thank you, Shamataji. The mantra. The. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. What's your name? Bhumi. Bhumi. Okay. So how do we spell the from these packs? Tell me wherever you tell me, we start that way. Um from right side. Right side. Okay. T. Where do you spell H here or here? Uh from the same side. Okay. Where do you spell E? From here or from here? Opposite side. Opposite side. All right. We spell E. Ooh, let's see. We have an H and we have an H. Oh. Wow, that's wonderful. Let's go to the third word and the third participant. We have the word Bhakt. So who's going to be the third participant who's going to do this? Put your hands up and let's have the third participant unmuted, please. And please keep putting your comments on the chat so that I know you guys are enjoying and having fun and we're all testing this mantra. Yes, I am. All right. So can I please get your name, please? Neil Madhav. Neil Madhav. All right, Neil Madhav. So we have the word Bhakt. Where do we start from? Left or right? Your choice. Uh, left. Here? All right. So we spell B. H from where? Here or here? Uh, opposite side. Okay. H. A from here. Here or here? Uh, same side. Okay, A, K from where, here or here? Uh, opposite side. All right. 
And T from where? Here or here? Same side. Same side. All right. That has been your wish. And you have, it's been a free choice. Is that right, Neil? Yes. All right. When I check here, we have an F. And we have an F. <laughs> that makes it wonderful. So yes, you know, when we have our faith, so far so good. But yes, we have to take the big word, which is Vishnu. So who's going to be the last participant? Who is going to take the word Vishnu and test this entire mantra correctly? Hare Krishna, Rachi. This is Rasika. Hare Krishna, Rasika. All right. And this time, you know what we're going to do? Like how God tests us in different situations, we are going to turn one deck over and keep one deck like this and make it more complicated. Because in our life also, we get a lot of complicated situations which come. So now, can you tell me, Rasika, where do you want to start from? Here or here? Um, right side. Right side? All right. So we start with the V. Right side, same side. I. Same side. S. Same side. H. Um, other side. N. Opposite side. And this side? You. Yeah. Oh my God. You have really made it a very difficult choice on both the ends. So what I'm going to do is let's hope we have uh, we have a T here and we have a T here too. Wow. And that ends us with an A and an A. And that proves that if we have full faith in Vishnu, he will be there to save us. So the moment we say, save the Bhakt Vishnu, he comes no matter what is our situation to save us and to cause us a lot of happiness. So we are all going to Focus on this. And there is a one beautiful word, very beautiful word that we are all going to believe in. And that's called believe, right? Believe. Every time we need to believe into things to make it really happen. Is that correct? So, 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 so. What we're going to do is I have um, a scroll. Okay. So I'm going to keep the scroll uh, right here for us. Okay. Let me, let me just put this one on it like this right here so that i can't change this this is going to be right here in front of us and now you all need to have your uh everyone on the chat because we are going to do some calculations i have opened my calculator let me just turn the light a little off so that you all can all see it yes can you all see the calculator perfect now i need i need i need somebody to give me a three digit number, a random three digit number. Please type in a random three digit number. Okay, we don't wanna see the name. Uh, okay, we're just gonna have this go off, right? All right, 402. Okay, 402 is the number I'm gonna put in 402. I need a four digit number, quick, 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 four digit number now. The first four digit number that I see, 1003. Okay, I'm going to add it to 1003. Okay, I need another three digit number. Three digit number. Everyone, three digit number. Okay, 546. 546. All right, I need, I need a two digit number. A two digit number. 11. 11 was the first two digit number that I saw. All right, one more. One more. I need a five digit number. Five digit number that I'm going to add it to now, finally. Oh, it's going so fast. Let me, let me like quickly look. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to add it to one, two, three, four, five. They're all as random numbers as you're really putting it into this entire screen. Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to take one more number. Uh, one, four, four, five, four. Okay. Vaidhi is giving one, four, four, five, four. And I'm going to click equals and it's got a such a big number it's got such a big number can you all please type what is the number that you're seeing now on the screen that's the final output of all the combinations that we've actually done so far so i want you to please put in type in the number that you're seeing i'm going to say it aloud for you all it's three seven three one seven three eight it's three seven three one seven three eight let me tell you, if your numbers, your input numbers were different, this output number would have been different. Is that right? 
So we instead of three seven three one seven three eight, it could have been any other random number that we would have landed at. But you know what? In this world, only that happens that Krishna wishes. We may have dreams, we may believe in something, we may want something else. But if Krishna doesn't wish or he doesn't will, then we don't get it. And therefore. Everything that happens in this world is destined, and it's destined by Krishna. So we have got uh, the number again. I'm going to say, show you. It's three seven three one seven three eight, which you all have also typed in. So there's no way that I could be really changing that number. And I had this scroll before we began this entire process, right? And it has a prediction. And let's see what is the prediction. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to open it like this. For you all, the first number is three. Can you all see it? The first number is three. Then is a seven. Three seven. There is a a three. And there is a one. And there is a seven. And there is a three. And there is an eight. Is that the number that you all typed in and all got to after getting the answers from it? Yes, we all got to this number. We all got to this number. But as I said, it's only when Krishna wills and Krishna wishes that we get to wherever we have to reach to. And I told you, the most important thing is belief. You need to believe in him. You need to believe that whatever he will do for us is for the good, for our good. And that's why all he wanted to tell us was believe. When I turn this paper upside down like this, it turns into a word. Can you all see the word? It turns into a word and the word says, believe. The word says believe. The word says believe. And we need to believe. We need to believe in ourselves. We need to believe that no matter what happens, he will make everything possible and good for us. So I want you to leave in some kind of nice uh, remarks as to how you really liked this entire session. And if you really liked it, please leave in your comments. I would love to hear from you. So I'm awaiting the comments from you. So please put it. I'm so happy to see all these wonderful comments from you. All right. I'm just going to start this. Perfect. So, thank you, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this wonderful show. Believe in the magic that's Krishna, and believe in the magic that's you. Thank you, everyone. I'm signing off. Shruti Very good. What? So, can I have the session now transferred to uh, Rekha Mataji or anybody else who's now going to take over? Yes, definitely, Mataji. It was lovely. Uh, we all enjoyed it so much. In fact, um, since the start of the program, I've had so many personal messages asking me when the magic show was. So it's the most, uh, kids were most excited for this. So for people who don't know, I'm sure everybody does know, but for the you know remaining few, I think uh, she, she's been teaching magic since uh, almost two decades now and she takes workshops for kids and as you see in her right now she's brilliant at what she does so uh, she can also teach all of you so if you want to get in touch with her you can get in touch with her through Radhika Kishori Mataji uh, whose number all of you have so yes that's about it and that brings us to uh, the end of this session so uh, I just want to leave you all with one advice that uh, whenever you uh, pray and say, you know, at Krishna or you're chanting 
or you're remembering or you're listening to his pastimes, Bhagavatam, whatever you're doing, set aside some time to remember and invoke the presence of Narsimha Dev. You can either sing the Narsimha Aarti or uh, you can say the Narsim Kavacha three times every day. Uh, it, the, the Narsim Kavacha is the king of all mantras and you get by saying that what you would get by anointing yourself with ashes and chanting all the other mantras. So you have to chant the Narsim Kavacha three times a day to protect yourself from all bodily and mental issues, any problem you might face. Uh, basically, um, when you when you uh, pray to Narsimha Dev, in initially it does not take away all the obstacles. It just gives you the courage to face it. He will come and deliver you. So you will have obstacles, but you'll also be more fearless. And by chanting the Narsim Kavacha, any negative effects of the planets or uh, uh, obstacles you are this time to face because of your karma, everything, everything Lord Narsimha will either come and deliver you or he will give you the courage or will soften the blow. He will do, uh, will always deliver you unconditionally. You just need the faith, the sincerity of Prahlad Maharaj. And I think that is the ultimate goal for a devotee to be like Prahlad Maharaj, to be completely and unabashedly, uh, you know, serving and in worship constantly. There will come many obstacles. People will, in this Kalyu, people will, uh, you know, try to um, put obstacles purposely in your way to, uh, uh, to, to stop you from chanting. But don't do that. There was Hiranya Kashyapu who, was, who did so much just to take Prahlad's life and to make sure he does not chant Vishnu's name. But still Prahlad did. And when time came, Lord Vishnu himself came to deliver Prahlad Maharaj from the demon. And uh, that is what will always happen. You can always rely on it. So uh, that brings us to the end. Now, uh, you have to tell me how much you enjoyed it. And I want all of you to write three Hari Bols in the chat box. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 11. Three Hari Bols, everybody, quickly so we can end on a beautiful note. Hari bol, Hari bol, Hari bol. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow at 11. Thank you. Thank you so much, Haley. That was amazing. And uh, I hope children will enjoy it. Thank you, Kruti, if you're still here. That was an amazing magic show. Yes, children, we're going to announce this magic show workshop for all of you all soon next month. So stay tuned, all of y'all who want to learn amazing magic. And thank you, Celine. You were too good with the children. We've having you on our uh, Esconcho Party uh, platform for the first time. And you were lovely. And uh, we hope to do some more uh, workshops with you too. So children, we'll see you all tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So stay safe, stay home. And we'll see you tomorrow again at 11 and again in the evening at 6.30 for a safari yoga. And tomorrow we're going to have a lot of games also. All right. So thank you, Haley, for this lovely event. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Jai Narsingh Dev. Jai Narsingh Dev, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great day.